Hi, Jeff Cote here with Boating Tech Talk. So what we're talking about next is a, one of my favorite products, uh, a solar controller. Why, Jeff, do I need a solar controller? Well, you only need a solar controller if you have solar panels. Um, but solar panels obviously um, need a controller or a PWM controller or an MPPT controller to regulate the energy coming from the sun. Because think about it this way, your batteries might be full at one given moment in the daytime when the sun is fully shining. And if your batteries are completely, completely full, how do you make sure that your solar panel is not overcharging the batteries? Well, the job of controlling and basically making sure that your batteries are getting exactly the voltage they need, right? And going through the three phases of charging, bulk, absorption, and then float, you do that with a controller. And so Victron uh, is a amazing company, uh, has tons of different products. And one of the products that we use commonly are their lines of controllers. And the most popular controller that we uh, both sell and install is the 7515. So 75 means maximum uh, voltage coming into the unit is 75 volts. And maximum amperage going through the controller is 15 amps. So effectively, it's a 7515. So when you're sizing a controller and a controller like this, you always want to make sure that your array uh, is sized and well within the operating range so that you don't exceed the specifications of this controller. This controller comes in two flavors. Uh, there's sort of uh, what's called the blue solar or the smart solar. And right now we're going to be talking about the smart solar 7515. You can see the product is, uh, and again, Victron does a good job with packaging. So you can actually see the controller itself right through the box. Um, it shows you a little bit at the back, uh, sort of the different things that it does. Now remember, this product is not just for the marine world. So there are certain aspects of this product that many of us in the boating world would not take advantage of because it's just not applicable to us. So uh, the, what smart solar means in this instance is that if you've downloaded from the app store, uh, the Victron app, you can actually remotely log in. Now remotely doesn't mean far away, but somewhere on your boat, you can have an iPhone and you're gonna Bluetooth to this device and you can actually see the data, not only in real time, but also historic data from the controller, which is great for figuring out how much is your solar array outputting, what amperage you're getting out of it, what has it been doing over time, and it gets better. Victron also, thank God, has allowed us to customize and configure these controllers for some of us that are geeks, for exactly what a battery needs. So you can actually, I can go into this controller, and I, you know, some of you know this, I'm a big fan of Firefly batteries, and I can actually go in there and actually do a custom charge profile to meet exactly what the manufacturer wants. So I can literally give the battery exactly what it wants and I can configure it via a custom charge profile. Naturally, they give you sort of preset choices and you can do that too. And you can do all of that via the app. So it means that basically when you're looking at this hardware, you don't need an interface. It doesn't need to be larger than it is because you're actually interfacing the unit for both information and programming over Bluetooth. Now you can't, go over Bluetooth from your home or down the dock. This is a local area network, right? Uh, but it's really handy because these controllers might be down in the engine room, maybe at the, in the aft of the boat. And so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open this little box. By the way, we've sold thousands upon thousands of these controllers and I've never seen a 7515 fail in the field, never. So that's a pretty big endorsement. Good job on the team that built it and on the hardware. So the back of this uh, sort of uh, box, there's a little sort of, I guess, maybe a security tab to know that if the box has ever been open, and that's what I'm sort of fiddling with right now. Um, you can see it's just at the back here, so I'm just slowly but surely going, and I don't wanna damage anything. So I'm trying to cut this, and my dexterity is not what it used to be. I used to be way better when I was doing tools. Now I just type on a keyboard and then talk. So it's, my life is a little bit easier now. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open this nice and slowly. All right. Excellent. Again, 
it's, it's a piece of electronic, right? This is not a dumb device. It's a little computer in there. So handle with care. All right, so we're gonna open this up and you can see I'm putting my hand on the display. I don't want it to flop out, right? So here's the box um, and this is the controller. So what you do in this situation, again, what I normally do or tell my technicians, put your hand on the front, drop it like this, take the plastic box out and you can see there's a lot of space around the box in case the packaging would get damaged on the outside. So they're giving room. So the package is a little bit bigger than we need but that's a good thing because we're, we don't want to damage this device. So here's the look of the controller. Look at it from the front. It's relatively not that big. You know, sometimes I describe it as basically a pack of cigarettes, but double the thickness, right? Look at the width. Some boats, you know, have 10, 15 of those. Some boats have one. Um, it all depends. And notice the connections right from the front right here, right underneath. That's where the wires are going to be actually interconnecting. You notice there's actually three sets or three pairs, right? So one is battery, then next is the solar array, and then after that is the load. Most of us in our boats um, will not be installing the load. That's for a different type of application. Remember, this controller is not just for the marine field. It works in the marine field, but it also works in different applications. Most of us as boaters are gonna be interconnecting the battery to those the first two, then the solar array. Oh, by the way, never screw up the polarity, right? So if you're gonna connect a positive on a negative and a negative on a positive, you're gonna be in big trouble. So never, ever, ever confuse the polarity or reverse the polarity on your solar panel to this controller. Like I, I tell my techs, make sure you measure voltage and confirm that positive is positive and negative is negative. And a way to do that, by the way, is just taking a multimeter. And if you see positive voltage from the solar panel while it's in the sun, not connected, then you know you're at the right polarity. If it's a negative voltage, you know that your leads are opposite what they should be and so that you have it reverse, okay? Um, another cool thing here is you can actually see there's a, actually a little fuse here. So the controller has a built-in fuse from the controller to the panel. And when you're gonna be installing this uh, controller on your boat, you're also going to need to have a fuse from the battery all the way to this device. So this has already a fuse from here to the panel and you'll still be running a duplex wire from the battery up to the controller. There's these little set screws right here. So you need sort of like a jewelry type of screwdriver to be able to tighten those. And then what happens is you can see the wires go in here. Um, you definitely want to make sure when you're installing a solar controller that no wires ever sort of are flaring out and touching one another. That could be really bad. So when you're actually doing this, you need to see what you're doing and having 99% of the wires in and 1% out, even one strand, it's not even 99%, it'd be like one thousandth, that's too much. You, all the strands have to go in and you make sure that it's absolutely clean because those two strands can never ever touch. So that's the tedious part of putting a controller, you've got to do it. Remember with electricity, there is no room for error. It's perfection or perfection. And if you don't have perfection, then you're going to have a lot of problems and you don't want problems with your boat. There's enough going on in the water to worry about electrical issues. The controller is relatively light. Uh, like I said, um, you can configure it for AGM settings, flood to lead acid settings, lithium. You can monitor it. Uh, there's even a little port, um, right here and you see that little tab it's called the ve bus ve net victron energy uh, so you can do that that's pretty cool and uh, what i like about it probably my favorite thing is how reliable it is because reliability is everything and then after everything else is sort of add-ons right benefits and the other one is bluetooth the fact that it's bluetooth is huge uh, people are always curious i wonder what my solar array is doing am i outputting as much as i thought i wanted is my solar panel in the right location? How does shading affect my solar panel? If you're geeky and you're curious, and curious is a good thing, we were all curious when we were kids. It's good to be curious even on a, if we have a boat. You can answer all those questions by just logging in via your app to this device. And you do that locally via Bluetooth. So this is one of my favorite devices from Victron. It's a Victron 7515 MPPT controller. And uh, we sell, like I said, thousands every year. It's a great device and it's reliable. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. 
Glad to donate my time to make these videos and to share our passion for marine electrical. Help us keep this channel ad-free by donating on PayPal, link below, or also potentially buying some of our merchandise on our store. We hear we've got a hoodie, we've got a hat, and we also have some tumblers and other gear. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.